In this video, we're going to talk about the molecular formula of a compound. A molecular formula is a formula that's going to describe exactly what types of elements are in a compound and the number of elements. For example, octane has the molecular formula of C8H18. So it's a compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen, and we have 8 carbons and 18 hydrogens. There's another type of formula called the empirical formula. And this is a formula that is the lowest whole number ratio uh, between the different elements in a compound. So for example, for octane, we could say that the empirical formula would be C4H9, and it would be the lowest ratio between carbons and hydrogens. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can determine the molecular formula if we know the empirical formula. It's all about ratios. And just to start with a very simple example of a ratio, uh, if you look at my hamburger recipe here, a hamburger needs one hamburger bun and then one hamburger patty. And when we put them together, we end up with our hamburger. And so the ratio in our final hamburger here is a one to one ratio of hamburger buns to hamburger patties. The empirical formula and the molecular formula would be the same in this case. If we expanded it a bit to make a triple decker burger, we would have a ratio, an actual ratio, of three to three. So we have three hamburger buns to three hamburger patties. I can almost write that like a chemical formula here if I use B for hamburger buns and I could say that there's three of them and then we'll put a P for the hamburger patty and there's three of those. So that's kind of like what the molecular formula would be like. The empirical formula for this uh, burger recipe or this final burger would be just a one to one ratio and that's the simplest whole number version. Let's try now a chemistry example. So here's a problem that you would see. It's quite common to see this type of problem in a chemistry course. It says the empirical formula for a particular compound is CH2O. If the actual chemical compound has a molar mass of 180 grams per mole, what is the molecular formula? And in a problem like this, when you're calculating the molecular formula, they're always going to give you two things. They're always going to give you the empirical formula and then they or at least the information to find the empirical formula and then they'll also give you the molar mass you have to have both of these things in order to determine the molecular formula now I like to break down solving problems into steps and so for a molecular formula anytime you're faced with a problem like this these are the basic steps we have to work with step one is to determine the empirical formula in our case we were given the empirical formula but sometimes they're going to give you the information uh, to find the empirical formula. You can watch the video on determining empirical formula if you want to learn how to do that. Uh, second step is to divide the molar mass of the actual compound that was given to us. It has to be given to us in the uh, question. We're going to divide that by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then finally we're going to multiply the subscripts of the empirical formula by our answer from step two. And what I mean by that is these subscripts right here you can see we have one for the carbon. If you don't see anything, we just assume there's one there. And then two. We just divide everything by our answer from that first step. So let's go ahead and do that. The first step was to uh, determine the empirical formula but that was given to us. And so what we want to do is we want to divide the molar mass of the actual compound. This is step two, which is 180 grams per mole by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So what I have to do is look up the elements here uh, from this compound on the periodic table and just add up all the molar masses. Okay, so let's zoom in here on our periodic table. We can see that carbon has a molar mass here of 12. I'm just rounding that. Oxygen is 16, and then each of those hydrogens has a molar mass of just one. So let's go ahead and add those up here. So we have one carbon, so we have 12 grams per mole, plus the one oxygen, which is 16 grams per mole. And then we have two of those hydrogens, which is just one gram per mole. And so let's see what we get. So we have 180 grams per mole divided by 30. 
and we end up with a ratio of 6. So that's telling us that the molar mass of the actual chemical is 6 times greater than this right here. So what we have to do is just multiply all these subscripts by 6. So we're going to end up with C, which used to be 1, so we're just going to put a 6 there now, H12 and O6. And there is our molecular formula. That was step 3 was what we did there. And that's how you find the molecular formula for a chemical compound.